Have you ever done ayahuasca or pharmawasca where you're orally ingesting DMT together with an MAOI? I have done both. Yeah. I've done both several times and I prefer pharmawasca because I'm <laughs> extremely neurotic about dose. Dose is my whole thing. Dose is the name of the game for me. And, um, and, and dose is really important to me, not just for me, but for everyone else as well. It's, you know, I, for example, if, uh, you know, I'm a, a young, robust guy and I can maybe take these experiences, but what if I wanted to give ayahuasca to my father? What if I wanted to give it to someone who's more vulnerable, who's a little bit older? Would you want to give them a plant concoction where you have no idea what dose they're consuming? That's mm -hmm. not, and you, you, and again, like I said, there is a sort of sophisticated uh, folk postology that is present in many of these traditions, but still, uh, I, I prefer to stick with a, a milligram sensitive scale. And I think that um, one of the major advantages of pharmawasca is that it allows that dosing precision, which then also allows you to, to reflect on certain experiences and, and set certain mm -hmm. thresholds. Like 75 milligrams is too much. Mm -hmm. That's too much. 75 milligrams of DMT with 300 milligrams of meclobamide is too much. Can and, we actually back up? Can you describe pharmawasca for people so they have a clear sense of what we're talking about? Sure. Pharmawasca is the, the idea behind ayahuasca is that you have two types of plants. One type of plant contains DMT, and that is sometimes called chacruna or psychotria viridis. And the other plant contains various monoamine oxidase inhibiting alkaloids. Harmine, harmaline, tetrahydroharmine, and that's typically Banisteriopsis capi, and that's the ayahuasca vine. So when you combine the enzyme inhibitor, this is inhibiting the enzyme that breaks down DMT, because DMT is not orally active. So you take this inhibitor, it breaks down, it temporarily inhibits the enzyme that breaks down DMT, then the DMT is orally active, and you can have this oral DMT experience, whereas without an MAOI, you can only uh, experience DMT via parenteral roots like smoking or injection. So um, the same idea can be, can be, the same property can be exploited using chemicals that are not plant derived. And arguably that is a superior way to do it, especially if you are abandoning the biases that are often attached to these so-called plant medicines. Um, so, you know, one of the aspects that is either a, a in some, it, it really depends on how you think about it. So the ayahuasca vine is actually active by itself without any DMT. Ayahuasca, i.e. Banisteriopsis capi, does not contain DMT, yet it is psychedelic. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the beta carboline alkaloids are psychedelic, um, but they're not psychedelic in a typically desirable way. They are uh, extremely sedating, to the point of being incapacitating really? at higher doses. Um, they're is extremely... it, are the beta carbolines different from what you would get in Syrian rue? Because my experience with Syrian rue is actually the opposite. It's definitely an upper for me. Well, it's dose dependent as well. And it's, they, they are substantially similar. There are, um, there are differences like Syrian rue doesn't contain tetrahydroharmine. Exactly how important that is, isn't clear to me. Um, but, uh, but in any case, the MAYs are, are uh, psychoactive on their own. They're psychoactive on their own. And at high doses for many people, they're incapacitating, extremely nauseating, and they produce a visionary experience, but one that tends toward a sort of delirium hmm. more than um, the kind of what, what people are really looking for. Like I would compare the effect of the ayahuasca vine more to um, like a really nauseating uh, DXM experience or something more than I would to DMT. Um, it's, it's not pharmacologically related to DXM, but that's kind of the feeling of like intense closed eye visuals that are sort of, um, weird and slightly menacing. And actually I, I would say I prefer DXM to Iowa. I find the ayahuasca vine by itself very unpleasant. Um, and, and I, so for that reason, and, and, you know, often people are incapacitated by ayahuasca. And I think that is from the beta carboline contribution. A high, a high dose beta carboline is going to do yeah, that. Yeah. I don't think that that is the DMT because in my experiences of using pharmawasca, have you ever tried pharmawasca? Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, I, I find that it's um, that it's less sedating and certainly less nauseating. And so it uh, does it allows you to have this profound extended DMT experience without the distracting contribution of the beta carbolines, which I don't think are are really beneficial. So you get a very sharp, very clear, very mm -hmm. energetic, very um, you know like I could sit and write at a, yep. in a chair at a desk for the entire ayahuasca experience. Something that yep. might not be possible with a uh, botanical ayahuasca experience. Yeah, and and for those who've never seen something like this before, the way that I've experienced from ayahuasca in the past is you're literally drinking a tea. So you would you would boil a certain type of seed or plant material in water and these MAOIs go into solution and you drink the tea together with DMT. So the DMT is then orally active. And for me at least, I'm probably not doing or I probably hadn't been doing a very high dose of the beta carbolines enough to render the DMT orally active, but I certainly wasn't sedated. For me, it was very movement oriented. I could very much feel it in my body before I had the classic mental DMT effects. And I, I definitely wanted to move. So it was a, a stimulating effect. And it was more of a full body experience than a purely mental experience like you would get from vaporized DMT, but still a DMT experience in character nonetheless. And like you said, like you can do stuff. You're not incapacitated. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's a really, and, and then the most frequently used pharmaceutical MAOI for pharmawaska is a European antidepressant called meclobamide. It's not a controlled substance. And unlike the beta carbolines in the ayahuasca vine, meclobamide uh, is, is essentially transparent in its effect. Maybe it causes a very minor mood lift or something like that, but it's certainly not visionary or nauseating or um, really much of anything at all. It's a, a sort of transparent oral activator of the DMT. So um, I think that that is, you know, I think that's a really beneficial way to do it. There are arguments to be made in favor of the beta carbolines. I'm aware of them. They may exert medicinal therapeutic effects of their own, and it may actually be uh, less beneficial to do pharmawaska with meclobamide. What but are the potential beneficial effects of the beta carbolines? I think they, okay, don't quote me on this, but I think that they have also been implicated in some kind of neurotrophic factor release or something. Although even some of the research on that is a little mm -hmm. iffy. I don't know, I, I, it's been a while um, since I've looked at that research, but I remember once thinking, oh, maybe, maybe the there potential is to induce plasticity or something like that. There was some, some, some arguable benefit to them, but experientially, I don't, consider it beneficial. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I've, I've done it every which way. Yeah, and yeah. I can say from personal experience, I find the meclobamide route to be the one that uh, produces the sharpest, clearest, most cognitively precise mm -hmm. experience, which is what I want. You know, if you're having revelations, I don't want to be stuck in a kind of torpor where I can't yeah, yeah. Right. Can't speak. I'm just kind of lost inside myself. I don't like that. That's not the point for me, you know, an experience that can't be articulated is lost. And so the challenge is to articulate and to integrate the thoughts and the revelations into your life and anything that increases the sharpness and the energy of the experience is beneficial for that reason. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Um, being being sharp and be able because people often describe these experiences on DMT or ayahuasca or whatever as amazing, but they can't actually bring anything back. And I think you do lose something by being in a state where you're having an experience, but you're not clear headed enough to actually articulate and therefore remember it in detail. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I think that's one of the things that makes DMT remarkable is the sharpness mm -hmm. is the revelatory precision of the ideas that come to you while you've used the substance.